Welcome to Blueprinderity. In this video, we will start a build on a self made power station. While you might have heard of all those brands like Bluetti, EcoFlow, and all the many others that are out there, I actually bought a very expensive one myself and I was pretty disappointed with the quality and the performance, so I decided I would just go ahead and build one myself with exactly the features and yeah, type of functionality I want and desire. So, to start with, I got one of the Euro boxes. That's basically a plastic box with no measurements for storage. So this one is 60 by 40, but you can get them in any heights basically. And also you can get them in smaller sizes so they can stack onto each other. So as you can see, I put in some proper handles so I can close off the built-in handles later on. So I have no open through holes in the box for water protection. So the first battery here on the left hand side is the one I bought a couple of weeks ago. I tested it for a while now. So did some charge cycles and I'm pretty happy with how it performs. So I decided to get the second one. It was from the beginning planned as a two battery system, mainly because of capacity and also because I want to have the discharge current as high as possible. Eventually I might may even get a third one, but yeah, I opted for the small batteries because thereby I have more flexibility on how I increase the capacity as we go as needed. And also I could opt for a 24 volt system if I want to with one big 12 volt battery. Obviously you don't have this opportunity. So we have 250 amp hour batteries resulting in 640 watt hours each, which will be a total of almost 1.3 kilowatt hours of capacity. Those are both lithium ion batteries. So we can actually use the capacity to a very good degree. We will figure this out later, what is exactly the usable capacity. And also we have to charge them first. So we have it connected to a simple normal laboratory power supply, currently charging with 5.3 amps at 14.1 volts. Basically I selected the cutoff voltage of 14.4, 14.6 volts for the battery, going at the moment to 14.4, just to be on the safe side and then check again. and. The problem here why I can't use a normal charger for a normal battery, normal starter battery, because the normal starter battery is PB based and the cutoff voltage or the charging voltage is way lower than for lithium ion battery. So normal chargers cut off basically halfway through the charging process. So that's not really helpful. Of course, I could buy a proper lithium ion battery charger, but I'm planning to build one on my own for other reasons. I will explain in another video, but here we go charging the batteries one at a time. And as soon as we have them both at maximum charge at the same voltage, we will connect them to each other to minimize any deviation in charge and thereby minimizing any currents flowing from one battery to another. I just want to avoid this as much as possible. Just about to place one of the chargers just here above the battery. Actually figured out that the space will be quite tight depending on the inverter that goes into this gap right here. So all the other electronics need to go in here. So quick update, charging still in progress. The voltage is going up and the amperage is dropping. That's simply for the reason that the laboratory's power supply here is not constrained by certain amperage or voltage. It's effectively the wattage and yeah, it maxes out, maxes out basically at like 75 or 70 roughly watts. So as soon as the watch goes up, naturally the amperage goes down and the power supply stays more or less constant. Meanwhile, here the lid is mounted, a little mishap with the drilling and basically have a proper setup here, proper, proper hinges. So this will be all solid the way I want it. I think if you buy anything from stock, no matter which manufacturer, it's always like plastic housing or even if it's aluminum or something, then it's like maybe somehow coated or something. So you never want to scratch it. And I want to have something that's really robust and can basically yeah, 
keep up with whatever I'm doing. Next up is the connection of the actual batteries. So I decided to connect them in parallel. So I keep the 12 volts, but I basically doubled the current that's available. So to do this, I opted for very thick cables. Yes, it's a pain to work with them, but it will pace off in the long term since you will have less energy loss through the cable and less heat developing. So whenever possible, I opt actually for one level above the actual required diameter of the cable. So here we can see actually a little bit of a time lapse of how the charging is developing. So we can see here that it's slowly creeping upwards and even though this battery got is pretty nice, but you can see the state of charge is outputted as 100%, which is just not true for a lithium ion battery. Again, this is relating to a PV based battery. All right, that's a wrap for today. We basically have both batteries charged and connected and we have this little battery guard here connected so we can easily check the voltage on the phone later on it will be also visible on the outside of the box on a little display but that's for next time we also have a main fuse here that's basically directly connected to the battery probably will change for a different setup later but for the moment that's fine so all the consumers will be connected through this fuse in the first place and then I'm planning basically on, on this wall area here on the side to have a little, yeah, like electrical panel to distribute the voltage or the, the current the energy. So this little charger here will then also connect in here. And this, yeah, electrical panel is basically a fuse panel where I want to have a lot of different um, car fuses uh, next to each other. So I can have each consumer with an individual fuse. So if one consumer goes down, the others can still continue to work and also from a yeah from a security point of view you obviously want to have the right fuse for each and every consumer so big consumers big cables and there you have a big fuse while for small consumers you will have smaller cables and therefore you need for a smaller fuse so that's all to come but i think for today we are quite done the box itself is ready and we have the locks installed we have the little handles installed on the side to grab it properly. We have all the hinges installed here and the batteries are in. Also, they are little here yeah, containment um, containment fixture there. At the moment, it's a bit loose. I left a little bit um, of play in there. And also here in between the batteries, because I want to have some foam or some here, basically protective material that the batteries while riding the car or something not bumping into each other without any any crash zone there so i want to have a little crash bumper here on the side of the box as well as in between and then it will sit very properly and, and tight in there <laughs> So next up is connecting everything together in a bit of a makeshift solution, but mainly I'm connecting a 12 volt car charger and also a USB-C and USB type A charger for laptops and phones. All right, that's where we got so far. We have the two batteries in there. I charged them both simultaneously, so this worked absolutely fine. We have the battery guard connected and we have a, yeah, let's say an intermediate wiring in place here i haven't got the right electrical panel here i realized the one i got is actually too big and i need a smaller one the only thing i installed here was uh, also a makeshift uh, solar charger this little guy here so basically it's not the right one that i need first of all it's not uh, efficient enough and not strong enough and also it's uh, not really made for a lithium-ion battery but you can set, um, you can change some settings. So for the moment it's fine, but I want to replace this one later on. Also here we have the main USB and USB type C charger on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I wired in another 
another socket, a 12 volt car socket basically. And also what's missing is another 12 volt connector, a proper connector where I can connect big loads without being worried of the connection becoming loose or also like some heat de de developing in, in the socket. So that's still to come. And here at the moment, everything is right through a main fuse up here. It's also a car fuse, the one you saw earlier. And then basically everything goes from there. I did have some smaller cables after the fuse, but actually the fuse is rated for the thinnest cable I have in place. So that's all fine here. But obviously later on, I wanna have each device, each load and each wire that's attached uh, with a separate fuse, um, basically perfectly suited for those parameters. So next, let's take a quick look on the solar charger. It's conveniently displaying the voltage. So we're at 14.4 volts, so pretty much charged. It's kind of, yeah, you charge until the cutoff voltage, but then obviously afterwards the voltage drops again a little bit. So I charge until 14.6 roughly, and then yeah, it dropped again now after one hour, half an hour, one hour, back to 14.4. I think that's all fine for the moment. Only a side of battery, nothing is connected there yet. Um, again, I'm missing the connectors to connect then basically an input, whether it's the alternator from the car or actually, sol actually solar panels, doesn't matter for the solar charger. It's basically just taking care of the batteries being charged properly. So a lot of stuff still to do, but at least the physical shell is finished. We have all the connectors in here for the output beside the one 12 volt for high loads and we are missing also the input sockets which i also want to have the, the proper sockets in place from the from the from the very beginning that i then can hook up the input devices to the solar charger and also an input um, input socket for 230 volts and an additional charger for the batteries and then obviously the big empty spot here for the inverter I have a small inverter at hand, but I kind of want to have the right and proper one in there and from the beginning because mine is actually 300 watts. Let me show you this one quickly. It's a, it's a 300 watt inverter, pure sinus, that's, that's perfectly fine. But basically 300 watt is not really useful for any of my appliances, so I don't see any, any, yeah, any sense in, in wiring this one up. The convenient thing here is that you can plug in 230 volt and it acts as a charger as well. So this is kind of convenient, but um, again, this is not the final solution. And I will rather go ahead and order a 230 volt charger to put in here. Kind of don't know where, maybe mount it to the, to the lid and then, yeah, it will hang above everything because I'm already running out of space. Remember here is a third battery supposed to go and yeah, then the main main in, inverter back here or I buy a big inverter that's charger and inverter combined. It's kind of neat, but also I like to have separate devices. So in ca case one part of the device fails, I don't have like yeah, a big chunky device that's not really or only partially functioning or then not functioning at all. So if I have everything separate, I can replace things. And if one breaks, the rest is still working. So yeah, a lot of stuff still to do. Let me know down in the comments if you like this type of video and if you want to follow this build furthermore, or if this was already all you wanted uh, to see, all you wanted to know. Until then, see you next time and thanks for watching.